Gearing up for the warmer days ahead? If that includes shopping for a reliable new car, SUV, or truck, there's no better time or place than Toyota's We Make It Easy sales event. You'll find great deals like huge cash back offers, low APRs, and low payment leases on many of Toyota's most popular models, including Camry, Corolla, Prius Prime, Highlander, and even Supra. So see your Toyota dealer today. We make it easy. Toyota, let's go places. Truck drivers, it's time to step up and get rolling with T-Force Freight. Drive for a team that's respected everywhere. As a CDL driver in Pico Rivera, you'll earn up to 72 cents per mile plus up to $10,000 in bonuses. Take pride in your work. Join the team at T-Force Freight in an essential job that keeps our country moving. Apply now at upsjobs.com slash Pico Freight. That's upsjobs.com slash Pico Freight. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 404. What's going on, everybody? Happy Friday. So I spent today going over a bunch of different areas that I'm planning to do some camping in. And I'm trying to needle them down and decide where exactly I'm going to go. And it's looking like I'm going to do some kayak camping up at Lake Mead very soon. I've uh, searched out a few different spots, talked to a few different friends who have uh, done the same thing, and it looks like there are some pretty spectacular little tucked away areas where you can do some camping out there and get some fantastic pictures overnight and while you're hanging out, get some fishing in too which is great. I don't get to do that nowhere near enough. You know, living in Vegas for the last 30 years, not too many water sources, right? When you're younger, I mean, I never really thought about going to the lake, to be honest with you. When I was younger, besides to swim, never never even had any desire to fish. But as I've gotten older, I find fishing cathartic, even though I hardly catch anything when I actually do fish. I find it cathartic. I like to just hang out, listen to an audio book, cast a line into the water and just chill. So I'm looking forward to that. And I found myself spending about four hours today digging through different areas and reading reviews and talking to some friends. And I'm pretty excited about next month, February, when I'm going to take this trip, probably right after the Super Bowl, considering it's looking like Uh, New Mexico is going to be something I'm going to have to push back because of all of these restrictions. I'm not going to some hotel room in New Mexico and quarantining for 14 days. Zero chance that's happening. Well, New York, on the other hand, I have family there. So for the trial, even if these um, all of these restrictions are still in place, I can go to New York and quarantine with my family and not have to worry about running up a huge... Uh, a bill at a hotel room just to sit there or something. So I'm definitely coming in and going, I mean, going in for the uh, the trial still for sure. But we're going to have to play it by ear with New Mexico. And as soon as the restrictions lift, I'm heading my ass right back out to Zorro Ranch for sure. But with everything as crazy as it is right now, it's like impossible If you want to go to a place like that, unless you have like family or friends, right? Because, I mean, you're talking about 80, 90 bucks, 150 bucks, depending on where you want to stay a night. That's just, it's just not feasible to go sit in a hotel room and spend that kind of money and just sit around, you know, in quarantine. So definitely on the back burner there. So I'll probably be just taking some, uh, some little trips here around Las Vegas and kind of locally until things start, uh, you know, start to calm down a little bit. But I'm pretty excited. I'll tell you that much, folks. I, I had this huge resource of Lake Mead pretty much in my backyard, and I never utilized it growing up. It's so, it's so weird. But I'm going to rectify that situation starting soon. And this little kayak camping trip, I'm pretty excited about. But as for what we're going to talk about tonight on the podcast here on the segment. You know, look, we know that Prince Andrew was aboard Jeffrey Epstein's plane 
And we know that he was at these locations at the same time as Virginia, according to the documentation that we have available to us and from corroborating witnesses. Now there's uh, um, a report from the Mirror uh, talking about how David Rogers, who was one of Jeffrey Epstein's pilots, flew Prince Andrew and Virginia Roberts on the same plane at the same time. Now what it does is it, again, adds a little more meat to the bone, right? A little more context because... When you hear the legacy media speak about this story, how many times have they brought up Larry Visosky or David Rogers or any of these other players who might seem like they played a minor part to somebody who is looking from the outside, you know, in, but to people who understand what's going on in this case, all of these people played their key part. They all had their little roles and their key roles to play. And these pilots are no different. You mean to tell me you're flying all of these people around on these planes, all these little younger looking girls, and you're not asking any questions? You don't go home and look at your own daughter and have a come to Jesus moment and say, well, what the am I doing out here? How could I possibly sell my soul for a few fazuls? I mean, I get it, right? We all want money. Money helps things be a little bit easier for the most part. But to be involved with something like this, something as heinous as this, something as draconian as this, it's just beyond me. I don't know how you can go home and compartmentalize what you were involved in. I mean, basically, you're aiding and abetting. I don't want to hear, well, I was just flying the plane. How did that work out for the Nazis at Nuremberg? Oh, I was just following orders. No, man, you were you were part of it, all right? You might not have abused anybody, but you were aiding and abetting the abuse by working for this man. And then not only that, but even after the man was arrested, still not coming forward, still turtling up and still not trying to help justice move forward. So what should anybody think or say about these people? Personally, I find people like this reprehensible. You know, if you were to come out and say, yeah, look, Epstein threatened me. He said if I said anything, he was going to clip my whole family. All right, well, then I get it. I understand why you're quiet. But still, you got to have some backbone. Once Jeffrey Epstein was arrested the first time, that was the time for all of these people who were supposedly afraid of him to come forward. That was the time for all of the people who thought that he had too much power. That was the time for them to come forward. And they didn't. Fast forward to the second arrest, and still the same story. So how can anyone take them serious or believe that they care about justice or they didn't know what was going on or that they themselves were in fact victims of Epstein? It doesn't pass the sniff test. As they would say down south, that dog don't hunt. Jeffrey Epstein was obviously engaging in all sorts of disgusting behavior. And people like David Rogers, the pilot who we're going to discuss tonight, is somebody who had intimate knowledge of that. Somebody was flying him around. Look, I can't say for sure, oh, with 100% certainty, oh, he knew what was going on. But, uh, well, you know, let's be real here, okay? Let's be real. Unless he was absolutely blind and uh, Tom Cullen level intelligence, then I don't know how he could not know what's going on. Epstein didn't have any children. He didn't have any nieces and nephews. So why would anyone who's working on this plane as, as a pilot or anything else think it's cool that it, 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 he's bringing all of these youngish looking girls around with him. And then after he gets arrested, you don't come forward and say, hey, look, I didn't know exactly how old they were, but yeah, now that I see that he's arrested for this, I can totally understand why it was some shady shit looking back in hindsight. But no, none of that happened. So the question becomes, 
Why? What are these people trying to hide still? Jeffrey Epstein's dead. You might as well just spill it, homie. Unless, of course, you're worried about implicating yourself. Let's jump into this article from The Mirror and see what Christopher Buckton, who is the author of the article, has to say. Headline. Pilot flew Prince Andrew and Epstein's private jet and sex slave was on board. That's ominous. That's not the kind of uh, headline you want to wake up to if you're the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family, is it? Especially considering there's a report out that his brother is looking to lance him like a boil, meaning get him out of the royal family, out of the picture, so he doesn't weigh him down when he takes the crown, just like I thought. Look, I don't care if it's the year 1100 or the year 2021. The the intrigue that goes on in, in royal courts is still the same. You have everybody jockeying for position. Everybody's looking for, sta- for uh, stature with the monarch. And the games are played. Literally a Game of Thrones. And if you think that Charles wants this dude hanging over him as he's coronated and he becomes the new uh, uh, king of England, you're, you're sadly mistaken. But imagine waking up and this is the article you see now after all the other articles you see. And it's obvious that the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family and his five team members are grasping at straws if we're going to look at their recent conduct. This is the pilot who claims to have flown Prince Andrew with Jeffrey Epstein and his alleged survivor, Virginia Roberts. So there's a picture of him standing there wearing some straight up typical suburban, uh, you know, dad white guy jeans with his button up short sleeve shirt tucked into the jeans and the, you know, the usual outfit with the black belt, the whole nine. I can only imagine if they panned down a little bit and took a shot, he'd be wearing the new balance to complete the outfit. What an absolute tool. What a character, caricature of himself. I mean, wow. Pictured for the first time, David Rogers refused to talk about the royal, his pedophile financier pal, or any of the survivors who claim they were abused. Yeah, well, why would he? Why would he implicate himself? It's obvious at this point that these people aren't going to do what's right. They're not going to come forward. They're not going to be honorable. So what's left? To mock them. To make sure that people understand that this man is part of the problem. Do the right thing. Come forward. Speak with authorities. What are you hiding for? I mean, I know you're trying to blend in in your your, uh, retiree community down there in Florida with your suburban dad outfit on, right? But come on. Okay, it's time to come forward. What did what do you know? What happened on those on those plane flights? What uh, what blanks can you fill in? Let's get this ball rolling. All right. Enough is enough. Why isn't this clown subpoenaed? That's the real question. I really hope. That we get them superseded indictments on Maxwell that we've talked about that we think will come. And I hope that it encompasses all of this stuff as well. I mean, you don't think that this guy is a witness? You, at the very least, somebody that should be brought in and, and during the Maxwell trial? How many times was Maxwell on the flight? How many times? All of these questions need to be answered. And somehow these people duck and dodge. It's a good thing outlets, outlets like the mirror are still going hard in the paint and looking for answers. Because if we were re- relying on Katie Corrick or any of them, we'd be waiting for a real long time, folks. When tracked down by the mirror in Lake Worth, Florida, the 67-year-old airman said, I can't talk. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you can't talk. I mean, I guess we could take that several ways. I can't talk. Is he bound by a gag order that has been imposed on him by the court due to a sealed indictment or him being a witness in the case? I guess that's kind of an open statement. I can't talk. Or we can just take it at face value, meaning I can't talk, meaning F yourself. 
So I guess it mean we we could just go. It goes on interpretation there with that, but it could have another meaning, right? It could be look, I can't talk, meaning there is a legal case underway. I'm a witness or I'm a subject to, of the investigation, whatever it may be, and I can't talk about it. He claims Andrew flew at least ten times on the billionaire's jet. Allegations that have thrust Andrew into the FBI investigation into Epstein. The prince has categorically denied ever meeting Roberts, who claims she had sex he had sex with her four times when she was 17. And that is really what gets me with the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family, right? How could he attempt to manipulate the narrative? When we've seen the pictures, we know that you you know her, right? So if you're lying about even knowing her, then why should we believe you about anything else? That don't make no sense to me. Either you're bullshitting me or you're not, all right? I'm not sitting here buying his BS. Oh, I've never met her. I saw the picture. I know it's not doctored. I actually know it's not doctored according to the specialists and the the people, the experts who have looked at it. Just do a quick Google search for yourself or a DuckDuckGo search for yourself and it's not very hard to find, okay? So him saying that he doesn't even know her right away puts him in the category of this dude's bullshitting. And then you add in all the other stuff, the email to Ghislaine in 2015, I have questions about Virginia. Come on, dude. Give me a break. If you weren't putting together such a piss poor defense, maybe people would give you a, a, you know, a little bit of the benefit of the doubt, but you haven't even put up any sort of defense that is worthwhile or worth believing. Nobody believes you, Joe Exotic of the Windsor family. But Roger's logs provide the most detailed, independent testimony to the courts about Andrew's friendship with the pedophile, placing pressure on the dad of two to speak to the FBI. You know what, at this point, how much more pressure can be uh, uh, um, applied to Prince Andrew? I mean, everybody's applying pressure to this dude. He's not going to talk. Why would he? What does he have to gain at this point? I mean, he's already been absolutely decimated in the media. The royal family wants nothing to do with him. The guy's absolutely well beyond ever refurbishing his reputation. So it's it's a wrap for this dude, okay? It is definitely a wrap for this dude. He might as well speak to the FBI at this point, unless, of course, he is scared of incriminating himself in a crime. And folks... What else could it be if he truly was a witness and he had nothing to do with this? And don't act like he doesn't have the best law, I mean the best uh, legal counsel and PR people around him. He's the Prince of England. You better damn well believe he does. So if they had any sort of out here, any way for him to come forward and speak to the investigators and not implicate himself and come out of this looking like, you know, a, a, a top bloke, as the folks across the pond might say, then, you know, he would do it. But he doesn't do it because guess what? He fears sitting down and speaking with investigators. And my question is, once again, what are you scared of and what are you hiding? I've been very consistent with my calls for him to speak to investigators. That's all I've ever asked for here. I've never asked for anyone to raid the dude's house and drag him out. None of that nonsense at all. All right, that's... Other people might do that, and that's that's fine. If that's the way they want to look at it, great. Me, personally, I want him to be questioned, just like anybody else in an investigation, through the steps like anybody else. I don't think that's too much to ask. The Mirror found the pilot living close to the Florida airport from which Epstein flew his survivors. His wall of silence mirrors that, that of other pilots who ferried Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell to and from. So, of course, they're they're not going to talk, right? Why would they talk again? These pilots, if they talk, they will implicate themselves as being, at the very least, aiding and abetting what occurred. 
How can you fly these girls to and fro and not yourself be in violation of the Man Act at the very least? You can't transport people across state lines to traffic them. And that's what was going on. Roger's LinkedIn profile still lists him as an employee of Epstein's NES LLC company. Between 1995 until 2013, he wrote an entry on the flight manifest for each trip he flew for the pervert, who killed himself in prison in 2019. Allegedly. So the pilot's logs are very important, right? But they're not the be-all, end-all. They can be fudged, they can be manipulated, and they can be doctored. So, my question is, how many trips weren't logged? How many people who flew on the planes weren't logged on the logs and flew under the radar? Now, when you're flying um, private, you, there, it's a lot easier, right, to make moves. Certainly can't do that if you're flying on a commercial flight. But when you're flying privately, like usual, when you got a couple of fossils in the pocket to spread around, make sure everybody wets their beak, well, you get a few extra privileges. Andrew, 60, has denied being good friends with Epstein, but Roger's flight manifest claimed to show him at all four locations where the billionaire had homes, including Florida and his private U.S. Virgin Island, Little St. James, and of course, Zorro Ranch, and of course, New York, Uh, you know, look. Let's be honest. He was at all of the properties. Him and Jeffrey Epstein were were good buddies. They were really good friends. And that's just the, the way it is, all right? There's no sugarcoating that, okay? And anyone who tries to sugarcoat it is gaslighting and bullshitting. We're not gonna, I'm not gonna bother with any of that nonsense, dealing with it even. We all know the score at this point. It's up. The onus is on him to come forward and, and, and provide some receipts. And so far, he's done none of that. Speak to the authorities. If you want, very simply, if you want to put this behind you, just speak with the authorities. And then let's go from there. Let's see what they have to say. But you're not even willing to do that. So why should anyone give you the benefit of the doubt? Why should anybody not think you an absolute scuzzball, Joe Exotic of the Windsor family? He also flew Roberts, now 37, to London in March 2001, where she claimed she had she first had sex with the Duke. So it's on the log. She flew over there. It's not even disputable at this point from where I'm sitting, okay? We got the picture at Maxwell's. What, what more do you need? Do you need a time machine to go back and see it for yourself? There's a lot of evidence, folks, and this is just what we have. Can you imagine what prosecution has? A source said, David has complied with the FBI's and others investigating those who enabled Jeffrey Epstein's offending. He was trusted with his most prized and high-profile friends, not only the prince, but Bill Clinton. Well, there it is. A source said David has complied with the FBI and other investigators. So that's why he says he can't talk about it. He's cooperating. So they're, they're, obviously, they pressured him. Now, this is my speculation, of course, right? It's that they don't say that directly here in the, the article. But when you read in between the lines, the source is saying he's complying with the FBI. He says, I can't talk about it. And it's rather obvious that he's not doing it for fun. So they're applying pressure to him, in my opinion. And this gives us a little look behind the curtain, folks, that there is work going on to apply pressure to co-conspirators and associates to get this thing wrapped up, and to get some convictions. He is adamant he didn't see any wrongdoing as he flew Epstein, his cronies, and the girls around. Andrew's first flights on Epstein's old jet, a Gulfstream, were logged in February 1999. In May the following year, he took a trip from New York to Florida with the American tycoon, pedophile, and others. On March 31, 2001, Rogers claims he flew the Duke and Roberts from New Mexico to Florida. According to court circulars, Andrew had an evening engagement in London on March 28, 2001, and one on April 2, 2001. 
So, right in the time frame, looks like everything matches up, doesn't it? You know, it's it's crazy. It's really crazy to me to see or think that anyone could defend uh, the Joe Exotic of the Windsor family at this point. The evidence is mounting and it's sky the F high. And also the little blurb in there about Clinton, right? What does Rogers know about Clinton? And if he's being pressured, are they going down that rabbit hole? I would really hope so. I would really hope that that's something that they're certainly exploring. Rogers alleges Roberts was on another flight with the prince to the Virgin Islands on April 11th. The last trip the royal is said to have taken was on September 1st, 2006. Flight logs do not feature Andrew's name, but the initials AP, they had been used for Epstein chef Adam Perry Lang. Buckingham Palace insists court circulars from the time disprove the claims. It refused to comment tonight. But a friend of Andrew said, David Rogers' claims simply don't stand up to any kind of objective scrutiny. The Duke was elsewhere on numerous occasions that the initials AP appear. Oh, yeah, well, you know, I, I guess his, his friends came out and say that, i.e. his legal team. So, okay, you're disputing it. That's fine. I am Again, I am more than willing to accept that this didn't occur if the evidence proved that. But it certainly doesn't look that way. So why don't you come forward, speak to investigators, do the honorable thing like you said from the jump, and we can figure this all out in a, a court of law. Only place to hammer it out, right? You don't want to do it in the court of public opinion. So bring your ass to the FBI station in London and speak with the investigators. And David Rogers, well, it sure looks like he's singing a tune already. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. All right, everybody, I will be back tomorrow, and we will pick up where we left off. Have a great night, everyone. It's true. Summer in Scottsdale isn't for everyone. We saved this sizzling season for the bold, those fun-loving, sun-seeking, badass travel warriors like you, who won't let a little triple-digit heat get in the way of a really great time. And if you're bold enough to visit during the heat of summer, we'll reward you with resort rates starting at just $89 per night. So come on, travel warrior. Visit itsthathot.com and book your Scottsdale summer getaway today. Truck drivers, it's time to step up and get rolling with T-Force Freight. Drive for a team that's respected everywhere. As a CDL driver in Pico Rivera, you'll earn up to 72 cents per mile plus up to $10,000 in bonuses. Take pride in your work. Join the team at T-Force Freight in an essential job that keeps our country moving. Apply now at upsjobs.com slash picofreight. That's upsjobs.com slash picofreight.